What is a theory? A theory is a mental model of a phenomenon. The model explains how the phenomenon works. It shows what's under the hood, its causes and its effects. A good theory is verifiable. It will support prediction of the phenomenon it describes. And it's also falsifiable. It is able to be made into an experiment that will either verify or falsify it. And if it's falsified, it can easily be modified to a proper explanation of the phenomenon. Namaste. So this short video series is about the consciousness model or theory of consciousness that we use in Consciousness Research Center. And this model is also called Dharmasar. Dharmasar means the essence of Dharma. And there are several meanings to Dharma. The meaning that we're using in this context is that which is. In other words, what exists. And why it is, why it exists. And finally, the reasons behind why it is the way it is. So we call this an ontological analysis of consciousness. What do we mean by ontology? Ontology is the science of being. It talks about what can exist and what cannot exist. How things develop one into another through the process of cause and effect and so on. And ontology is also concerned with developing a hierarchical pattern or matrix of terminology about the phenomenon that describes that phenomenon completely and enables the construction of models or theories that predict and confirm its behavior. So in this video series, we're going to talk about three principal qualities of consciousness. The fact that it's absolute, sometimes called Brahman, Shiva, Shakti, and so many other names for the absolute or the supreme. There are four kinds of consciousness, Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya. And we'll be explaining these terms later on. Consciousness is caused by upadis, subtractive filtering of the absolute Brahman, or infinite consciousness. So first of all, let's look at the consideration that consciousness is the absolute. There's no rational, mechanical, physical, or biological explanation for consciousness. Consciousness simply is. It is independent of everything else. It's neither a cause nor an effect, but everything else is dependent on it. After all, without consciousness, nothing else matters. And it's called as Brahman, Shiva, Shakti, etc. in the scriptures, the ancient sacred writings that describe consciousness. Principally, these are the Upanishads. Also, Buddha's teaching has a lot to say about one particular level of consciousness, which we call Sushupti. And we'll get into that in the process of explaining everything around this theory. But the most important point is, the theory itself is called Dharmasar, the essence of Dharma. Now, if Dharma means what is, why it is, and how it is the way it is, then Dharma Sar, the essence of consciousness, is actually Brahman. It's actually the absolute, that which exists prior to everything else and is widely viewed as the cause of creation and so on. But actually, Brahman is neither a cause nor an effect. Brahman simply is. It's not an actor. It's not a cause because it doesn't do anything. <laughs> but 
the universe and the existence springs up spontaneously around Brahman, just like the grass grows in the springtime all by itself. And there's no cause and effect relationship. In fact, there's no relationship at all because Brahman is completely transcendental. These are some of the deep qualities of consciousness that we're going to explore in this series and the following. The second point is that there are four kinds of consciousness. Jagrat, consciousness of the senses and world. Svapna, consciousness of thoughts and dreams. Sushupti, consciousness of emptiness, the void. And Turiya, consciousness of consciousness. Here they all are in a chart. If you have been following our channel here on YouTube, you've seen this chart many times before. But now we're going to get deeper into the meaning of this chart and how you can actually apply it in life and so forth to attain enlightenment. So the Vedic theory of consciousness is related to a phenomenon called upadis. Upadis are subtractive filters. In Turiya, there are no upadis. So this is the root or complete consciousness from which the authors are derived. Sushupti is consciousness without objects. Objects are filtered out by the upadi. Svapna is introverted consciousness. In other words, sense inputs are filtered out. And Jagrat is extroverted consciousness. In other words, the internal organ, the antakarana, and all its functions are filtered out. So let's talk some more about upadis. There's a good analogy or metaphor for upadis in the subtractive color theory. Now, if you've never worked much with art or video, <laughs> any of that stuff, you may not be familiar with it, but every artist is because these are our materials in art, the different colors. How are they derived? Well, let's take a look. The subtractive theory of color is based on three primary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And with these combined, they produce the primary additive colors, red, green, and blue. But the interesting fact is, if you combine all three of these subtractive uh, filters, you get black, no light at all. In a similar way, the upadis that are applied to consciousness create what's called adhyasa, or superimposition. This is where something of different qualities is overlaid on a substrate. In this case, the substrate is Brahman or Turiya. And these are different upadis overlaid or superimposed on Turiya, canceling out some of its qualities. What is an upadi? An upadi manufactures a limitation and superimposes that limitation on Turiya consciousness. When you try to superimpose a limit on Turiya, which is unlimited by nature, and this is Maya, it doesn't really exist. For example, uh, you can dress an elephant up in nice clothes, but it's still an elephant. <laughs> it's going to act like an elephant and think like an elephant and so on, no matter what kind of outfit you dress it up in. <laughs> so in the same way, Brahman is always Brahman. It never changes. It only appears to change because it's covered from our point of view by these conditioning upadis. And what are they? Ignorance. Maya is ignorance because it's illusion. Why is it illusion? Because it's temporary. <laughs> it's temporary, it's imperfect or unsatisfactory, and it's not self by definition because you see the objects of consciousness out there. They're different from you. They're different from the perceiver, the conscious being, Brahman. So these three kinds of upadis, sushupti, svapna, and jagrat, limit the 
uh, consciousness, underlying consciousness of Brahman in different ways. And when they all combine together, they produce zero, blank, nothing, <laughs> unconsciousness. Uh -huh. So that's why they're called ignorance. They reduce the consciousness, the natural, all-embracing consciousness of Brahman into a particularized consciousness uh, called the individual or the living being, the jiva, one who is born. And then so many combinations of these are combined together to form like the body, the mind, karma, sense objects, and so many other phenomena that we think have real existence are actually illusory. And this is pointed out by this model of consciousness. Thus, we are attached to three kinds of maya, illusion, ignorance or wrong concept, desire or wanting what is not, and action, creating karma or causes and effects. These three are called forms of death in the Upanishads. Why? Because out of ignorance, we think we can take an identity as an individual and then come up with these desires for things that are not currently existing in our sphere of perception. And then we take actions in order to realize these desires. And in so doing, we create so many unintended consequences, which are called karma. So this is the basic framework or the basic ontology or theory of consciousness called Dharma Sar, the essence of Dharma that underlies the entire Vedic literature, especially the four original Vedas and the Upanishads. And it finds its clearest expression in the Mandukya Upanishad, which you can watch a series about here. And other Upanishads comment on it, but really the exposition and then the commentary by Shankara and his great guru, Gaudapad, are just the most shining examples of the ontological theory that underlies all the other Vedic literatures. It may not be directly expressed, but once you understand this framework, once you understand this background or substrate to all the Vedic literatures, you will see it everywhere. And it will help you understand the real meaning of the Vedas. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.